Wow, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> That's what you like. Uh, lots of attention. Um, it would probably make sense this turns into a bit more of a Q&A than me just droning on. Because I'm sure um, most of you got different questions or different things you want to find out about rather than me droning on about something generic. Yeah, so light, light winds, what difference do you do to heavy winds? Uh, okay, so um, light winds, um, one of the big differences is the chop. So that chock, I keep things nice and simple. Some people have got lots of different chocks, different sizes, different thicknesses. I just have one chock as supplied by Winder, nice and simple. It's either in or it's not. <laughs> um, so in the light airs, which actually was one of the big things I forgot to do yesterday morning, was when it dropped, you know, we went sailed out, there was a bit of breeze yeah. and it started dropping. One of the things I forgot to do, which is a bit of a schoolboy, was play with my chock, which, uh, so the chock, just to clarify what it does, it obviously limits or promotes how much the Boom. mast bends here. And obviously the more the mast bends here, it pulls out shape from the front of the sail. So whatever sail you've got, the sail's got to go from five knots to 25 knots. So it's got to have quite a range of sail shape and you've got to be able to move the rig enough to try and maximize what you've got in each condition. So in the light stuff, if you can do anything you, anything possible, try ideally without touching the kicker to promote mast bend. So in the light stuff, put your chock behind the mast, do anything you can do to try and get the mast to bend without having to yeah, without having to pull the kicker on because usually that's the only way of bending your mast mm. in no wind is to pull your kicker the problem is when you pull the kicker on is it obviously makes the leech of the sail really hard and hooked and draggy um, so just moving your chop you know that's the rig moved forward by 10 mil it's probably eight mil here so it's eight mil less sail at the front that you don't need because it, you need the shape of the front of the sail when it's eight or 10 knots, but when it's six knots and you're sat on the side, this is effectively kind of, uh, well, it's a kind of drag. And the more you flatten the sail shape low down, the less draggy it becomes. Mm. Um, so that's kind of number one. So that's, about, that's up to six knots? Just until, until I'm sort of, starting to get my feet i mean i'm about 90 kilos so yeah. it's a, it'll vary depending on how heavy you are <coughs> so when you get your feet in the straps and you're starting to use a bit more kicker mm -hmm. then take the chock out okay. and put it in front but when you're kind of sitting on the side and it's not you know it's you're not fully powered kind of, yeah. then um bend the, bend the mast a bit do you lose your pointing ability by doing that though because you haven't got the shape of the foot no because that conversely the other other thing happens because instead of having the angle of the sail off the mast is quite full. It actually gets finer because you've taken the shape out. The front of the sail gets, you know, the angle gets finer, so it actually helps your pointing. Um, so that's one of the reasons you do it. Um, do, you, do you sail without the chalk when it gets really windy? No. You always leave it in? Leave it in, because by that stage, you're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to stiffen the rig up right. because it's, yeah, the rig will overbend. Yeah. Very easy, so put but then the you can't pull it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I so that's I can go into that in a minute, but I mean um just finishing off on the light stuff, I don't you can see I don't even move any of my shrouds, they're all taped up. Yeah, but um, the, 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 the shock will only work when you have a shroud tension. Otherwise you're only putting up your mast straight up. So you, somewhere the mast has to be bent. Yeah, so but that's it's that's what your main sheet's doing. Because your okay. main sheet's is pulling the tip back mm. even no matter how much how little you've got that's the bit that compresses the mm -hmm. mast so um so it's enough even in the least light. tension also yeah so but it's um you don't need much to move the tip of the mast no okay yep you know because it, it effectively that's right at the head of the mast it's unsupported or well, you can do it there you can see <coughs> how much you move when you let go and pull the pull the main sheet down the tip of the rig's going a lot 
Charlie, when it's like that, then how much trouble would you actually have on, and ha then how much main you actually have? Um, so when it's light, I, I basically, I just, I just have the kicker um, in tension. I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't be pulling the boom down. Okay. It would so just be enough down. so when I you come out of attack, the boom so the stops going. Yeah. You know, so it's just a bit of tension. And all the the leech tension is done on main sheet. And what are you looking for on the leech? So um, the top telltale on the leech. So if you um, sorry, sorry, sorry. so you're trying to keep. It's hard in a solo because you can get quite greedy and shut the leech down. You're trying to get the top leech telltale, so the one that underneath that top band, to at least be flying part of the time. So you can start, I kind of want to reach a no breeze, but that's what you're looking for. You're going to try click, 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 click. As soon as it stops and you know, it stalls, it'll fly behind the mainsail. So that means the air at the top isn't flowing nicely across the sail. That's the limit, so you just ease it off a fraction. It looks like you and Pete uh, do seem to have quite hooky leeches. Yeah. Even in the light stuff. But if you, the difference is, you look at everybody else's, even in your own, it's incredibly even more hooky. hooky. Yeah. So the key bit then is, is you need to have the boom out. You can't have hooky and boom on the center line because you'll literally stop, so out here. particularly in the breeze, in, in the chop. So you then, you're moving the traveler. So if you if the breeze increases a little bit and you can tell, yeah, I can just squeeze another little click of main sheet on, then I'll look at the traveller, because obviously that's just pulled the boom in. So then I'll just ease the traveller off a little bit to keep the boom out over the over the quarter. And then uh, yeah, so likewise if I'm easing it for the lighter stuff, it might just be a little bit half an inch on the traveller just to keep the, the boom kind of over the side tank. But here, I mean, I've, I've struggled here in the light and the chop. It's yeah. quite aggressive. Uh, so you just have to sail a little bit freer and keep the boat going because it's so easy to stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. And up. foot, loose foot. Oh, sorry, foot. Um, yeah, so foot. So at this stage, you're trying to keep the, you don't want the inhaul in tight because yeah. that negates all the benefit you're getting from the mast bend because you're just dragging the shape of the Because all you steer to is here. You know, you don't look here to steer. You only yeah, look at these yeah. telltales to yeah. steer to. And, you know, people say, oh, what does the in-haul do? Well, you can see it's quite aggressive, the change it makes to the bit you're looking at. Yeah. So you want just to have enough in-haul that it just sort of sits neutral on this sail. So all, all the sails have slightly different shape here, but you don't want it to flat, you just get a flat spot, it just annoys me. It won't make any difference to how fast your sail goes, but it just looks a bit nicer like that. <laughs> and uh, if, if in doubt, and then when it gets really light, um, you can, uh, then it's a case of flattening the foot out a little bit. Uh, not that much, but just something like that. Because you can get it too deep pretty quickly. As the breeze sort of builds and you've got something to hike to, then you can go really powerful on the bottom of the sail. And then obviously as, I said, as the breeze builds again, you're starting to flatten out again. Um, but then as the breeze builds, the important bit is you pull the inhaul in first. So um, particularly here, like when it's been choppy, you, the finer the entry, you know, the flatter the luff of the sail, the less forgiving it is. So we were just talking about making it nice and flat and fine for when there's no wind. Generally there's very little chop, so it's flat water so it works. But as soon as you have um, any chop or waves, you need the front of the sails to be more forgiving. So you sail a little bit lower, mm -hmm. a little bit faster. So it's important you, as the, as the breeze builds, you pull on your inhaul if you've got an adjustable inhaul. Uh, to the point where, you know, so windy, you know, 20 knots, you're um, you're right in against the back of the mast. So when you go around the lured mark, you know, you wind your inhaul first and then you can wind your out all on second. Um, Do you have to sail with it as tight as that? Yeah. So when it's really like top top end, uh, yeah, just as flat as you can get it. Cunningham? Uh, yeah, same thing. So, um, 
Again, it's a little bit sail dependent, so <coughs> I'll talk about this one, it's the nice one. Uh, the Cunningham makes a real massive difference, so because the, the panels are laid out so that all the strength goes vertically up the sail, you don't need much Cunningham to make quite a big difference to the head of the sail. You can see that, so it's powerful enough that it bends the mast in compression. So that, you know, if you go pretty hard, I know um, if any of you see uh, Tom Gillard who works with me, he's a little lad, he goes sailing in 20 knots and he literally, you can see him put his foot against the... <laughs> um, it's, you, don't, you know, most people don't go quite as extreme as that, but it, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to use that to be power. Um, equally, you can, over, you can very easily overdo it and just lose your pointing ability because you've just completely open the leap to the sail. Um, <coughs> so that's kind of a progression. I'll go flatter in the foot and then start sneaking on a bit of cunning in and if then. You, if you're sort of going sort of bow down. Yeah. You try do you wind on any cunning to, in that sort of <coughs> So if I go sort of bow down the sail a little bit. First I'll go flatter in the foot. Yeah. And then if I want to go bow down again, I'll just sneak a little bit of cunning. Right. But I, when, I when do you start in. raising the board then if you're in terms of all the other controls? Yeah, so that's that's another critical one. Is that, uh, it, that's your kind of first thing. Yeah, if you want to go bow down, you kind of need to raise the board because it reduces the weather helm. And conversely, if you want to point, you need to have the board down. Obviously, you need to be able to create helm, you know, weather helm. People always say it's bad to have weather helm, but you need a little bit to create a, the rudder as a positive lifting force. So. If it's completely no feel, then it's not doing anything of any use to you apart from steering it. You might as well make it a lifting force. So that's where you need a little bit of bite on the helm. And the big one of the biggest factors is your is your board. I mean, I've just got these marks here, which are uh, leading edge vertical, trailing edge vertical, and then just you know, just put marks there as much as anything, so I know where I got to is the wind. Would you, would you put the board down so that the trailing edge is vertical and the, and the leading edge is pointing forwards? Do you use, go to that extreme or not? Uh, that, no, not generally. Although, um, so in the lighter stuff, I've gone to this, that's my sort of go-to mark. Yep. And then I think maybe because I've got a bit of extra timber on me, I've um, recently, yep. I've been, this week I tried in the lighter stuff going a little bit more board down, um, which I think, Help me a little bit. When, when you were doing the port tack yesterday in the chop. Yeah, so port tack, I had the board to here, but then I was really like leaning on the sail, so you know, not even trying to point. So everything's kind of sheet as they are, but just sailing through. Not, yeah, exactly. So the, the, the telltales were never even lifting off horizontal, it's just really sort of low and keeping the boat uh, just feel powered up. Right.
keep going. Keep going, keep going.
geil. Gals are around the outside, isn't it?
low. I'm 
rid of us thinking they've got to be going fucking slowly in that little bus, but they're all just sort of trundling along at their own little pace. Come on, Shane, get that puppy rolling, mate.